welcome Sim, Siham, sorry. Um, Siham received her Master's in Applied Science in Machine Learning from Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at the University of Waterloo. Her research focused on deep learning for speech recognition. She currently works for Viva System as a machine learning engineer and data scientist. Welcome. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you. So, hello, everyone. Welcome to my session. Today, I'm going to talk about security and in artificial intelligence and the real threat of adversarial attack to deep neural networks. Since 2013, deep neural networks have shown a phenomenal success in solving many challenging tasks, not only in computer vision, but also in speech recognition and natural language understanding. As a result, deep neural networks are now deployed in many real-world applications. Despite the incredible performance of deep learning, can we really rely on deep neural networks when they are deployed in live crucial applications where security and safety are priority number one? So maybe we all want to own self-driving cars, but we all want our self-driving cars to make no mistakes when it comes to recognizing road signs. However, what if I tell you that it is possible to pull a self-driving car into thinking that a stop sign is a high-speed limit sign, and even with high confidence, from different angles and from different distances? And this is by adding a few stickers in a very specific way that can pull the self-driving car, um, self car into thinking that this stop sign is something else. Did you know that it is also possible to use 3D printed glasses that can pull face recognition systems into recognizing a man as a female or a female as a male? These are called adversarial attacks. And it's a very dangerous problem and a real concern for the AI community today. In fact, recent research and studies uh, demonstrated that deep neural networks are uh, vulnerable to adversarial attacks in real world, and these attacks are instantiated by something called adversarial example. So what is an adversarial example? How can uh, these attacks are performed, and how can we defend against them and make our model more robust? So what do you see here? I think we all see an image of a pig. And if we feed this image to a deep neural network, it agrees that this is a pig with 91%. How about this picture? So we may agree that they are exactly the same. However, if I feed this image to the same deep neural network, it says that it's an airliner with 99%. This is magic. For machine learning, a pig can fly. However, it, the original picture was uh, manipulated in a way that can, be the, uh, can fool the deep neural network in a way that it looks exactly the same to our uh, vision system. This is what we call an adversarial example. A small perturbation was added to the um, original uh, picture. This perturbation is not random noise, but it is very well crafted. So the definition of an adversarial example is a modified version of the input data that is intentionally perturbed to fool a machine learning model. That's such perturbation is often uh, imperceptible to humans. So before I can dive deep into how can we uh, generate these adversarial examples, let's refresh our minds and see how we can, um, uh, what is the pipeline of a typical image classification task. So we train a deep neural network to take as input an image, and it provides uh, as input a class label with some probability. So we train the deep neural network to maximize the prediction accuracy. At um, each iteration of the training process, we use a very known algorithm called gradient descent to update the parameters of the model in order to minimize the loss between the predicted label and the true label. And we do this uh, for many iterations until we reach a high accuracy and our uh, parameters are fixed. There are many architectures for 
um, deep neural networks, the most used one in computer vision is called convolutional neural network. CNNs are composed of two types of layers, convolutional layers and uh, fully connected layers. The convolutional layers are responsible of extracting features and uh, very discriminative features in order to make the prediction more accurate. And then the uh, fully connected layers are uh, responsible for making the classification task. To train a CNN model, we need a huge amount of data. However, with transfer learning, we can now use pre-trained model and plug them into our uh, uh, CNN model in order to accelerate the uh, classification task. There are already pre-trained models in the internet like Google Lenet, VGG, and uh, Inception models that are pre-trained on a huge amount of data and they can use it to, um, uh, to, uh, to uh, accelerate the training of CNN models. So, how can we manipulate an image and fool a deep neural network? There are different types of attacks. They differ based on the goal of the attacker, how much information does the attacker know about um, the victim model, and what type of perturbation you use it. Is it specific to an input image, or is it a universal perturbation? So, what is the difference between a targeted and non-targeted attack? Once an attacker has access to a trained model with fixed parameters, it can, man like the attacker can manipulate the input image in a way to uh, make the classifier predict any incorrect class, but not the incorrect one, uh, the correct one. That's what we call non-targeted attack. Things can get worse, and the attacker can manipulate the input image in order to make the classifier predict a very specific incorrect class, and this is class, this class is uh, picked in advance by the attacker. That's what we call a targeted attack. So, how can we uh, perform a targeted adversarial attack? Let's go back to the image of our pig, and um, during the training of a CNN model, we aim to um, keep the input image fixed, but we update the model parameters in order to maximize the uh, probability of the correct label. So we use the loss between the predicted label and the true class in order to update our model parameters. How, however, we keep the input image intact. In targeted attack, However, we want to update our input image while the parameters of the model are fixed in order to maximize the probability of our targeted um, class, which is here, for example, airliner. To do that, we need to add a small perturbation to the input image um, to generate an adversarial example. And then we use, we calculate the loss between the adversarial class and the predicted class. And then we calculate the gradient of the loss with respect to the input image itself. This quantity will give the uh, attacker an information how a small perturbation to the input can affect the loss function. So the idea is we want to adjust, uh, instead of adjusting the model parameters, I am going to adjust the input image itself. So let's look at the process in more details. Originally, our image is, um, that is classified as a pig with 91%. We initially uh, set our perturbation to be equal to zero, and in this case, the uh, adversarial image is equal to the uh, input image, and set our target to be the airliners, for example. We feed our uh, adversarial example to the trained CNN model, and we calculate the gradient of the loss between the predicted uh, label and the target class with respect to the uh, input image. This quantity will be added to the perturbation, and the perturbation will be added to the input image. We make sure that our, our generated adversarial image to be uh, a real image means the pixel values should be between 0 and 255. And then we make our test. If the model predicts our target class uh, on the uh, adversarial image with high accuracy, then we stop the process. 
Otherwise, we keep doing the process over and over again until the model predicts our target class with uh, high accuracy. And we end up with an adversarial image. So, I, this is the algorithm, so I will provide the slides in case you want to try to um, uh, generate an adversarial example by yourself at home. So the question is how many pixels I have to change in order to make a successful attack. A lot of uh, work were uh, focused in order to understand how a convolutional neural network works and how it, it is able to extract uh, discriminative features from my input image. So we found out that each pixel of the image has an impact on increasing and decreasing the confidence of the DNN in the appropriate class. Based on this information, it was possible to fool a deep neural network by changing only one pixel. So and his colleagues were able to fool three different models on 70% of the CIFAR-10 test set by changing only one pixel. So in this case, a horse was um, predicted as a frog with almost 100% confidence. This is what we call one pixel attack. So which pixel to choose and what color it should be to perform a successful target attack? In fact, we uh, start by uh, changing, randomly changing a few pixels in the image and then we uh, evaluate this uh, change by checking how uh, the uh, confidence, how the, uh, the, the, we increase the uh, confidence of the model in uh, generating this target class. Then we uh, filter the bad pixels and we continue our search uh, among the uh, most uh, promising pixel uh, changes. So, for that, we can use an algorithm called differential evolution. And if we use this algorithm in a very correct way, we will come up with our magic pixel that can fool a DNN model uh, with, even with high confidence. Another information here, I want to mention that it is also possible to generate um, a universal perturbation. With a single perturbation, I, I can fool a deep neural network on many images. So here an example with this uh, single perturbation that we added to these three uh, images, the uh, DNN model uh, predicted them as a different types of dogs, but I used only one uh, universal perturbation. So, how can we fix the problem? Many people claim that adversarial attack is not a problem when it comes to object detection, especially when it comes to automated cars. So if I train my model uh, using a data augmentation technique, can I secure my model and make it more robust against adversarial attacks? The answer is no. In fact, Lab 6 uh, uh, conducted uh, an experiment and they showed that they can um, print a 3D uh, real object and fool a deep neural network classifier from every angle. So let's look at this experiment here. So basically, they created a 3D uh, printed turtle. This turtle is predicted correctly with high confidence from different angles. And then they generated a modified version of this turtle that looks almost the same as uh, the original one. And this one is predicted as a rifle with high confidence from every angle. So this experiment uh, proved that it is possible to fool a deep neural network that are trained for object detection. And then the uh, threat is real when it comes to uh, self-driving cars. So, we have noticed that all the generated adversarial uh, examples are generated uh, by having uh, access to the model parameters, specifically the weight and the gradient. So how about hiding the model parameters? If I, um, uh, if I limit access to my model, does this give me security? Well, the answer is no again. 
think if you think about all these commercial uh, uh, machine learning uh, platforms like Google, uh, IBM, Watson, Amazon, they provide APIs for machine learning and uh, every time we query these APIs uh, to make some prediction uh, task on a given image, they only provide the class label and the associated probabilities. But we don't have any information about the uh, training algorithm, the model architecture, or even the model parameters. However, these uh, uh, platforms are also vulnerable to adversarial attacks. That's what we call a black box attack. In fact, a uh, good fellow from OpenAI were able to fool a um, deep neural network that is remotely hosted in one of these platforms by only observing the input of the, uh, the, the output of the platform given a specific input. For example, MetaMind platform misclassified 84% of adversarial example generated a black box technique. Before I can explain how we can, uh, how these adver black box adversarial attacks are performed, I want to mention a very interesting and a very surprising characteristic of ad adversarial examples. In fact, when we um, craft an adversarial example to fool a model A, it is possible to transfer this uh, adversarial example to fool another model, even if the two models have different architecture, they are trained using different data sets so long as they are um, trained to perform the same task. So transferability is very critical to perform the black box attack. We can uh, generate an adversarial example and transfer it to our vector model while having a limited information about our vector. One of the uh, most known technique for black box attack is the uh, substitute model technique. So the intuition behind that is I want to train my uh, substitute model to mimic my black box target model. For that, I am going to uh, generate a set of input data and query my target black box model to get the labels. Then I train my substitute model given this input data and the label coming from our uh, platform, the black box uh, model. Once the uh, substitute model is trained, now I can generate uh, adversarial examples using a white box attack by adding a small perturbation to the input image. And then due to the transferability between adversarial examples, I can use the generated ones to fool my black box model. So the idea here is the substitute model is trying to approximate the decision boundary of our target, target black box model. So most of the adversarial, uh, adversarial examples are generated in the image domain. So how about other fields? It's very challenging to uh, generate adversarial examples in the, uh, in, uh, using speech data due to variability of signals over time or uh, using text data due to the discrete property of text. However, speech recognition systems and uh, 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 natural language uh, understanding uh, AI systems are also under the threat of uh, adversarial attacks. So in speech recognition, for example, uh, it is possible to add a small uh, noise, a very well-crafted noise, to our speech data in order to make our speech recognition make uh, a wrong prediction or uh, produce any uh, output the uh, attacker wants. So this is an experiment where we add a small perturbation to a piece of music and we uh, make the, our speech state-of-the-art speech recognition model produce a very specific output. The uh, experiment started over the air condition in order to lead uh, to, uh, to a real threat. Uh, so instead of um, uh, feeding our adversarial audio example directly to the speech recognition system, I'm going to record the adversarial audio and then this, uh, play it using a microphone. And in another experiment, I'm going to broadcast the um, uh, adversarial audio example via radio. So let's listen to these adversarial audio examples.
Oops. Okay. So. So this is the original one. So by adding a small uh, perturbation to this image, a, a deep speech with, which is a state-of-the-art speech recognition system is going to produce, okay, to recognize it as OK Google. So, what does it mean? If you have a device like Google Home or Alexa, an attacker can have full control over your device by only listening to the radio or listening to a piece of music at your home. This is very dangerous. Okay. So there is two other examples, but I focus it on the OK Google one. So how about uh, natural language understanding? So if you think about all these recommendation systems that are using sentiment analysis in order to uh, rank uh, comments and um, people who are publishing their reviews about a product, a movie, or uh, other things. So it is possible to change only few characters here. Only by changing only one character, it is possible to flip, to flip the uh, uh, prediction from a positive review to a negative review. So think about if we do this in a massive uh, number of reviews and comments, we can affect the business value of the product or the, um, or the movie that we are trying to, to recommend or we are trying to evaluate. So it's not easy to generate an adversarial example and uh, uh, perform an adversarial attack. Things get uh, more difficult when the uh, knowledge of our model uh, decreases and uh, the complexity increases. So, in fact, white box attacks are easier than black box attacks. And if I want to perform a targeted attack, it's more difficult than non-targeted one. However, adversarial attacks exist and they, uh, they are a real threat to our artificial intelligence systems. How can we defend against them and make our model more robust? There are different uh, defense techniques. These techniques are developed uh, in three main directions. First one is by modifying the training of the model. The second one is by modifying the uh, network itself by adding uh, more layers or changing our objective functions. And finally is by um, adding um, like a, a separate model during the uh, testing of the model and we consider them a network add-ons. So the first defense technique is called adversarial training. So the idea here is very simple. I want to train my uh, algorithm using clean and adversarial examples. So during the training, at, at each training iteration, I use my, the state of my model to generate adversarial example on the input data. And then I use this generated adversarial example along with our original input to retrain the model. This is one of the most used techniques nowadays and it's considered as the state of the art. This technique does not only uh, increase the robustness of my model, but we have not said that it also reduces overfitting. So if you uh, look at the uh, red line and the blue line, you can notice that if we train our model using adversarial examples and we uh, train them on the clean uh, data, the, our model converts faster it, and it performs well than the uh, model that is trained on the clean data and tested on the clean data. The second technique is called uh, network distillation. A network distillation is not originally developed to uh, make deep neural network robust against uh, adversarial attacks, but it's a technique that is developed for transfer knowledge from very complicated uh, networks to, or very big networks to the small one. And it's developed essentially uh, for uh, deep neural networks that are deployed in smartphones uh, that requires a small network. So here, the idea is I'm going to uh, use the knowledge of the uh, model itself in order to increase its robustness. 
So the knowledge you use is the label or the probability generated by the uh, initial network. So first, I'm going to train my model using a training data, and the label the labels are represented as a hot uh, one hot vector. After the training, the uh, model will generate uh, probabilities or uh, uh, prediction probabilities for every input data. We transfer this probability to increase the robustness of the model. So now we are going to retrain my model using the same input data, but instead of using my one hot vector, this time I'm going to use the uh, generated probabilities by the original model. We found out that this uh, technique can uh, increase the robustness of the model against the small perturbations. And finally, there is another technique called uh, perturbation rectifying network. The idea here is I am going to uh, use a separate model in order to uh, detect if there is a perturbation or not. So uh, every time I have um, an input data that I am going to uh, predict, I pass this uh, image through a, a network called the perturbation rectify, a rectifying network that will generate a rectifying image. The, um, the removed pattern during the rectification is then uh, sent to another trained model in order to predict uh, there, is there any uh, perturbation or not? If we detect uh, uh, that there is a perturbation, then instead of using the um, rectified image for doing the classification, I am going to use the original input. This technique is mainly developed for uh, detecting universal perturbation. Okay. So, I want to mention here that there are other defense techniques, but we found out that every technique can be de de like the defeated easily if we change the uh, attack technique that we uh, originally uh, we are originally defending against it, or uh, by changing a few parameters of the model. So the original question remains: Why do adversarial attack exist in the first place? There are a lot of researchers and a lot of arguments, but I think it's three that I feel that they can explain why uh, adversarial attacks exist nowadays. The first one is when we train a deep neural network, we make an assumption that uh, our uh, testing data is coming from the same distribution as our training data. However, we found out that adversarial example the distribution of adversarial examples is different from the uh, original training data. So our assumption is somehow incomplete. The second argument is coming from the fact that uh, deep neural networks are highly um, linear when it comes to high dim dimensional data. So uh, adversarial example exists when the decision boundary is very close to the uh, manifold of the training data. In fact, this argument explained the, uh, or uh, can be explained more by the next argument, which says that deep neural networks are uncertain. They are uh, not, when they generate a label, they are not 100% certain, but uh, the prediction is based on uncertainty. Second, when we train a deep neural network, some training data stop um, contributing into the training loss. So, uh, they, so they come up very close to our decision boundary. In fact, if you think about that, so our training data is very close to the decision boundary. If I do like a small change, it can very easily jump to the, old, to the opposite side of the uh, decision boundary. And this is what happened when we try to generate adversarial examples. So, how can we make our model more robust and build like more secure deep neural networks? There is a lot of effort that should be done there. First, we need more uh, open source platforms that can help us evaluate our deep neural network against adversarial attack. 
So there are a few of them. I can mention Cloverhands and Fullbox that are two open, uh, open source libraries that can help you evaluate the DNN model against different uh, types of attack. Second, we don't have enough uh, data to um, test our deep neural network against this uh, type of uh, perturbation. Uh, for example, last or in 2017, Google tried to make three competitions, and they provided the data in order to uh, let people generate different uh, types of attacks, targeted, non-targeted, and also to uh, propose some defense technique. We need more of this uh, open source data. And finally, we need to understand how deep neural network work. In fact, uh, Still now, uh, the performance of deep neural network is still magic. We surprisingly found out that deep neural networks are very uh, powerful in uh, solving many challenging tasks, but we still need to understand exactly how deep neural network work. So uh, maybe if we uh, dive deep into how deep neural network work, we can understand how these adversarial examples are generated. So, to, to conclude my presentation, I want to say that uh, adversarial attacks are a real threat, and uh, it's very dangerous now against the AI systems. We, we agree, or maybe it's very true, that deep neural networks are very uh, powerful in uh, solving many prediction tasks, but we now need to focus our efforts into making our deep neural network more secure and more robust and more reliable. Thank you. So, if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer. I can't see you because of the light, but, oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, there is a mic if you want. Um, hi guys. Um, my question was um, in the image and audio attack with the adversarial example, what would happen if um, before we stuck the counter example through the network, we did some kind of like image processing steps to smooth it that way a single pixel attack could get like smoothed out over the area around it, or the audio attack could get smoothed so it gets rid of that random noise. Yeah. So this is a very good question. As I mentioned at the beginning of the uh, presentation, adversarial examples are generated in a very specific way. In fact, the uh, added perturbation is not random, is not noise, is very well crafted. That's why even if you use some uh, noise reduction uh, techniques, still this technique cannot detect this perturbation because they are very well designed to uh, specifically fool a specific deep neural network. So. We found that, that even if we use some uh, MS pre-processing technique, we still can fool a deep neural network with high accuracy. I guess my question is more like, um, like in the photo example of the pig, um, if it was a picture taken with like a standard camera, we might expect that the noise in the picture would follow a certain pattern. And now that we have this um, specific adversarial example, it might not fit that what like a smooth background or something should look like. Um, so if you stuck like a filter on, on it, you might cut that noise, even though it's specifically targeted and not random, you might smooth out that entire Yeah, I, I understand that there is some defense techniques that are based on detecting a noise, like thinking that the perturbation is a noise, but if I go in, in more details on how to uh, generate this uh, uh, perturbation, the, it's made in a specific way that to make it very uh, small. So we fix uh, a volume of epsilon and make sure that the perturbation is between minus epsilon and epsilon. And second, when we add the perturbation again, we will make sure that our image is very real. So the, the, fi the pixel values should be between zero and two 55, so to make it look at as uh, an image coming from a camera. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, talking to the defense strategy, uh, you said there are three defense strategies, right? 
yeah. like build up a, a, another layer of the uh, uh, model uh, uh, oh. network or uh, using the uh, distillation way. This one? Uh, yeah, I think this is the third one. So basically, I think no matter how deep your neural, uh, your neural network is trained, it's still a uh, division in a uh, hyperspace. I mean, in a high dimensional space of the data, right? Yeah. So why wouldn't we just uh, figure out the division shape in the hyperspace? And and if we can add some noise in this hyperspace, maybe we can use it as a new strategy for defense, right? Yeah. Um, I think there is two parts in your question here. This, the first part is regarding this uh, uh, model, which is the uh, perturbation rec rectifying network. So it's actually is a pre-trained model that we add to uh, our deep neural network, and it's pre-trained separately in order to detect uh, universal perturbations. So if the model, uh, the, this pre-trained model, separate one, is detects this perturbation, then instead of using the um, original picture coming uh, from the user, I am going to use the rectified image. This is the first part. And I have also to mention that uh, here there is two separate models. The first model is for rectifying the image, and the second model is for um, uh, detecting if there is a perturbation or not after we remove the uh, pattern between the original picture and the rectified one. The second part of your question is how, uh, even if we uh, train deep neural networks and make the um, and the deep neural network is uh, recognizing some kind of um, boundaries between our uh, training data, how we still can generate the adversarial examples. In fact, we found out that uh, when we train deep neural networks, uh, some training data stop contributing. Uh, into the loss function of the uh, the trained uh, model, so uh, as soon as they get uh, classified correctly. So, as I explained, if if these training examples are very close to the uh, boundaries, if I make a small change to the uh, original input, it can very easily jump to the other side of the decision boundaries, and that's what we found in deep neural networks that make. Uh, that might, uh, they are, that make them uh, vulnerable to adversarial examples. So uh, that's one of the arguments why they exist. Thank you. Okay. I don't see. Yes, yeah, sorry. It's okay. Uh, all right. So phenomenal talk. Uh, we're learning a lot, uh, and uh, I'm curious, how did you get into this field? Like, what what spurred your interest in adversarial? It's a very uh, good question, actually. Uh, well, it's, I was curious about the, I heard about adversarial attacks, and uh, since I am in contact with my uh, ex-colleagues at the university who are uh, now doing PhDs, and uh, they are doing research on this specific topic, so I was very uh, interested in understanding how these attacks are performing, and uh, also because I am using deep neural net networks in my work, I want them also to be uh, secure, so maybe I have to take into consideration this kind of uh, uh, threat. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, um, I had a question. Um, in order to generate uh, adversarial examples of black box attacks, uh, yeah. how often do you call your model? I don't see you, uh, but I'm going to. Oh, okay, hi. Uh, okay, uh, this is also a very good question. So, because when we uh, query uh, uh, commercial APIs, we have a limited number of queries, otherwise we have to, we have to pay a lot. So uh, uh, the uh, good fellow and his colleagues, when they come up with the technique, they query the black box attack on a small uh, number of input data, and they, uh, they use it, a specific type of uh, data augmentation to uh, increase the number of the input data without uh, calling the uh, target model. So the, uh, originally, I didn't mention that in my uh, slides, but originally uh, the uh, uh, substitute model was trained on both the uh, input uh, data that were uh, sent to the target model and other um, data that were uh, added by uh, data augmentation technique. So
So the, we, we, don't, we don't query the uh, API for all the input data. That's going to be very uh, expensive for an experiment. No problem. Hi. Um, so I have a question related to uh, the post-training phase where we can use some of the techniques that you have shown. So how, do, how does the adversarial attack uh, fit into the space of quantization deployment? Because quantization typically also introduces a lot of noise and it can really change the accuracy of the network. So how do we, how can we use these techniques to isolate the adversarial attacks and solve the quantization problems in a separate way? Or are they going, always going to go together? So I didn't understand very well your questions. Uh, but so, um, so when when it comes to taking deep neural networks and deploying them in different low power devices, oh. they, they have their own challenges of loss of accuracy because of quantization effects. And here we are talking about adversarial attacks, which can also play along. So how can we, uh, you know, do you have any recommendations for improving this situation? Okay, I really. To be honest, I don't have uh, a good information or a good answer about the uh, adversarial attacks on deep neural networks that are deployed in uh, smartphone devices. Maybe this is an area where I have to make some more research. But uh, all what I know is that uh, adversarial attacks are uh, very dangerous on deep neural network, especially when deployed on not on smartphone devices. So um, as I said, there is a very specific technique on training this um, method, like the uh, network distillation that we use to transfer knowledge from a big neural network to a small one that is deployed in the smartphone. But if the adversarial attack can also be transferred from this big one to the small one, I am not really sure I need to make more research about that. Sorry. Thank you. Hi. Uh, Thank you. Oh. Hi. Uh, my question is about transferability of adversarial examples to a black box model. Yeah. Uh, one of the techniques you mentioned is the use of a substitute model querying the target model and using its predictions. Yeah. But w how do I choose the architecture of my substitute model? It could be anything. Moreover, the training data of the substitute model might not match up to my target model. So how would I account for these differences and actually make the attack transfer? Yeah. This is one of the good questions because I removed a few information from my slides due to the time. Uh, in fact, the uh, first, when they did the, this successful attack against Metamine, uh, let me go back to the slide, sorry. Okay. So, this one. So, I put like in the small that it is the adversary examples are generated using MNS data set. So before these people made their attack uh, against the platform, they are uh, somehow sure that uh, uh, MetaMind is already trained on MNS data set because it's very well known data set. And second, they know that uh, MetaMind also performs some kind of digit recognition. So in advance, the attacker has to know that the uh, substitute model should be trained to do the same prediction task uh, as the uh, attacked model. And this is one of the uh, uh, conditions for transferability. I say that they, should, they may be in different architecture, they may be different data set, but they should be trained to perform the same uh, prediction task. So those people have an idea in advance that uh, MetaMind can do um, digit classification. So they use uh, the MNS data set to generate the input, uh, the adversarial examples. What's the second part of your question? Is it? Okay. Okay, thank you. My, my question is a little different. It's, it's um, you talked about the training being accomplished and then new, mo uh, new images being introduced. But in the cases where um, models are continuously being trained or updated or periodically being updated, what about the, the opportunity there for introducing adversarial images into the new 
of data that's being added to the training set or those reference data sets that we're talking about from Google and others like that. I mean, they could have yeah. them in them and they scan them or whatever. Yeah, so uh, that's a good point because we know that we, uh, the, once we deploy our deep neural network, we, we can keep uh, doing training after that. So it's not static, but it uh, can update it over the time. And that's what happened for the attack generated against uh, Metamine and also against Google. So the image that I picked uh, in this slide is not an arbitrary image, but it's a very specific image, the one that for Google API. In fact, there is an experiment when they feed this originally this uh, image to Google API, it predicted uh, the, uh, make the prediction correctly. And some people make this uh, image, they added some perturbation to make Google API uh, recognize it as a dog, while we see the, dip, the two uh, pictures are exactly the same. When I took this image and tried it on uh, Google API, in fact, it is predicted correctly. What happened is that Google um, has um, improved their model when they uh, knew about this adversarial attack. So, of course, it's a race between the attackers and the defenders. Every time we find some uh, defense technique, the attacker come up with a new uh, attack technique. So we still are in this race, and of course, whenever we retrain our model, we can come up with a better prediction and uh, make our model more robust. But yeah, we, we cannot defend against these attackers. Yeah, and uh, true, and w even when we use the uh, adversarial training technique, uh, we found out that this technique and the paper itself mentioned that this, the, 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 ad the uh, adversarial training can also be defeated. So that's why I am presenting today about this topic because it's a very serious problem and we have to really focus our effort to come up with some more robust uh, technique to be a more uni like a universal technique. So uh, the race is still there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I just had a question. I was wondering, um, right over here. <laughs> um, so I definitely um, buy the argument that the threat is real. I was wondering if there are any real world examples of sort of nefarious groups using adversarial attacks to, um, to fool a real world system. So what they are, and if not, why haven't we seen them yet? Do we not know about them? Or is it just that these AI systems are not deployed widely enough to prevent like a so, adversarial effect is not uh, a recent one. Like it, they they discovered like maybe like three or four years ago. It's not a new thing, but the uh, like since the attackers now start making black box attack, universal perturbation. Then, if you Google it right now, you will see how many uh, results will come regarding this topic. So, it's a very active uh, field and a very uh, important uh, issue for the AI community. So. Uh, it is, there is real threat against real AI uh, systems. So it's not uh, something on papers or researchers. So is there a specific example of an attack? Um, I was just wondering if, if there was an actual specific example. Because I, I mean, I, I totally buy that it is a real um, the, the This attack, the, uh, the uh, um, API attack is a real attack. Like, I should find a link to how these people performed a, a black box attack against Amazon, IBM, and DeepMind. So it's a real attack, even if it's a black box. So concerning uh, the um, self-driving cars, or I am not sure if there is a really uh, a real attack there using this one of the techniques. So, so far they are using graffiti on stop signs in order to fool the self-driving car. But using this technique to fool the self-driving car itself is, didn't like happen really in real life, but it is pot potentially it's going to happen if we uh, keep improving these attacks. Thank you. No problem. Thank you so much. If you have a question for the speaker, you can take it out so that we get, get ready for the next session.
Okay, so I, okay, there is no. I will share my slide in case you uh, want to have more information and uh, yeah, you can contact me anytime if you have more questions. Thank you.